thank you. Oh, wow. The Maori king has invited me to cook a seafood dish for his annual banquet. Now, the Maori place a lot of emphasis on their natural surroundings. So if I'm not mistaken, I might get to catch my own fish. That'll be really interesting, going fishing with the Maori. Looking forward to that one. I am Christian Bauer, executive chef and co-owner at Troika Sky Dining, one of Malaysia's most innovative fine dining restaurants. I wanted to have some fun with my European heritage and my love of world cuisine, so I came up with the idea of taking over the kitchens of royal families and reinventing traditional palace dining. My style of cooking is modern, but it always has a definite twist. Who doesn't love a challenge? Join me as I put my culinary skills to the test. I'm here on the wharf in Auckland, New Zealand. It's a long, long journey halfway around the world, but it's worth every single second of the trip. This is going to be a really exciting adventure. I am here to explore Maori cuisine, the food of the indigenous people of New Zealand, of which I know absolutely nothing. My adventure is starting right here at the Pacific Ocean. For His Majesty, King Tuhitia, I'll be cooking a seafood dish. Flounder served with camo camo and weno weno. Now, I've certainly never cooked these two traditional Maori vegetables before. And here is our flounder. There we go. Flounder. Ah, oh, this is beautiful. They're actually sea monsters. They're not fish at all. Anything that has its eyes all on one side, I can tell you, is not normal. Now here is a delicacy that I just cannot walk away from. New Zealand is rightly famous for its green lip mussels. Now if you've only ever tried the frozen ones, you haven't lived. These are still alive. Put quickly into a hot pot butter and white wine, there isn't anything better in the world. Now that's got me thinking. I'd love to somehow incorporate mussels into the king's traditional flounder dish. Maori were highly skilled hunters who lived off the rivers and seas and birds and plants from the abundant forests. Separated for 80 million years from any other land mass, New Zealand had no mammals at all, except for a couple of species of bats. Contact with Europeans saw the introduction of new foods and cooking methods. The Maori took advantage of these, but also retained their indigenous foods and customs. To this day, Maori are masters of the hangi, cooking vast banquets to perfection in the wet steam and smoke of underground ovens. After the British colonized New Zealand in the 19th century, the Maori elected their own king to protect their land, sea and rivers. In modern times, the Maori monarchy has been influential in reclaiming ownership of indigenous Maori land from the British Crown. Today, the Maori monarchy continues to play an important cultural role both in New Zealand society and globally as an enduring expression of Maori unity. In the short time I have, I'm going to try and get really close to the heart of Maori culture. I'm going to have to if I'm to impress the king. Well away from the glare of the city, alongside the Waikato River, is Narwa Hwaya, the ancient land of the powerful Waikato tribe and the seat of power of the Maori monarchy. King Tuhitia himself is not available to meet with me. Given his busy schedule of engagements, I'll be lucky if I get to see him at all, unless I can somehow earn his respect. Hello, I'm Chef Christian. Kia ora Christian, welcome to Tūrongo Wai Marae. Thank you. Wow. Good to have you here. This house is amazing, isn't it? Lovely. 
though I'm not allowed into the king's home, one of his chief advisors explains its significance. The buildings represent the husband and wife. Mm -hmm. And this is why they elaborately carved. This is the husband on this side. It is the official uh, dining room of the king mm -hmm. and also a residence on this part of the house. Tomorrow I'm going to be cooking for the king. Is there any advice, anything I need to follow? I think he definitely would love the flounder. Okay. Uh, but how that's going to prepare, well, you, I think you're going to probably surprise them and surprise yes, that, us That's all. still a secret. Yeah. It's still a secret. King Tuhitia succeeded his mother on her death in 2006. She herself ruled for an incredible 40 years. The king's eldest son tells me what I must keep in mind when preparing food for his father. The spirit of the food, mm -hmm. uh, where it's come from, the connections between the land and the sea, um, and just making sure you put your love into cooking for His Majesty. Is there anything specific that the king does not like to have in his food? Garlic. He, he dislikes garlic, but I'm sure you could hide that in some of the dishes. A meeting has been arranged for me with a very special lady. Auntie Mary has been the cook and nanny in the royal household for more than 20 years. We get to chat over a glass of sacred spring water. Coming directly from an underground spring, this water just could not be more pure. It is also believed to have healing properties. When you're sick, you come to it and you confess to your sins and things like that. Mm -hmm. And we call it tapai. We cannot change yesterday. I was thinking of doing that too, confessing to all my sins and then doing the spiritual cleansing. But the trouble is, I'll be confessing so long, I won't have time to cook dinner tomorrow. So I'm going to leave that to next time. Go to the burger shops. <laughs> <laughs> Buy the burgers. <laughs> Auntie Mary has hand-picked a selection of traditional Maori foods for me, all gathered from the wild or grown in her own garden including the local sweet potato, kumara, and the glorious purple Maori potato. See? Wow, look at that. Most of the food that you get here, you can actually just find it in the sea and gather it up. In the sea? I'm going to try and fish my own flounder. You, you will. What is the importance of the king and the royal family to you and to the community? Very important, very important. Oh, I know he's my king anyway. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know what Manuka look like? No, I have no idea. It's a Manuka. So this one is a Manuka? Mm. Where you French get our Manuka honey from? Yes. Which you sell to us for, oh. for a huge amount of money. Yeah. <laughs> and honey isn't the only thing the Manuka tree is good for. <laughs> oh, yeah, look how clean did we get that? That's brilliant! Learning about the Maori king has been very interesting. But now I need to find out more about the food I will be cooking for him. I seek out the king's personal chef, William Tawara, to get some help. Now I bet I'll be cooking food from his own backyard. Nobody home. Let me go check with the neighbors. My first right. traditional Maori greeting. I was looking for William. It turns out that William was actually at a funeral, but he arrives before too long. William! Hello. 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 The extended family and the sense of community are very important to the Maori people. Oh, I've learned that already from Charlie. Oh. <laughs> and sure enough, we head into the abundant crops behind the house. So I'm going to be cooking for the king and all his family. And, and the royal family. As well as some staff. Should be fun. Uh, other relatives. It'll be fun. Yes. Yeah, oh, yes. Am I scared? <laughs> Not at all. <laughs> so all the food is actually coming from the community? From the community. Um, being the king who he is, mm -hmm. he, he is our king. And whatever he wants, we give him. <laughs> oh, as good as that. Yes. <laughs> I want to be king too. That sounds like a good deal. <laughs> So William, tell me about this kamu kamu that I'm supposed to cook. <laughs> uh, it's the very small pumpkin. Oh yeah, that's it, that's it. You just, just like snap it off and okay. 
That's there the we one. go. That's the one. It's got a taste of its own. You just boil it? Just boil it. Good. That's going to be very exciting. It starts off as a little bud called a weno weno. Mm -hmm. Am I supposed to use the weno weno too? Yes. If we follow a plant right to the end, you'll see mm -hmm. the tip. Yeah. Which is that bit there. Yeah. Um, we can we pluck that off. You know, I, I kind of want to try this already. I'm always very excited to find new things. Mmm. That's going to be really, I think it's going to be really great cooking with this. I'm not quite sure how to prepare it, but I've got a couple of ideas. Next stop, the flounder. Chef William directs me to the community who provides seafood to the king. What a, what a, These two ladies have served up hundreds of flounders over the years. I'm going to have to cook the flounder for the king tomorrow for the feast. Actually, I was thinking of taking the flounder and putting a mussel inside and then rolling the flounder around the mussel. Well, well, that's something new. Oh, mine, mine goes in a frying pan. Frying pan? Yes, dust with a bit of flour and in a frying pan. There's no, no fancy way, but we just like <laughs> to taste the flounder. Okay. <laughs> the flounder I will be cooking for the king must be caught right here today, and that is my responsibility. Luckily, I have some expert fishermen to help me out. We got a good day today. Hey, a lovely day. From our tupuna, it's important that we have a whakarite before we go out, which is a, which is a prayer for the protection of our, of our tupuna, of our ancestors. Tupuna mai tene te atua tangoroa, e ngā mātua tupuna tāwhiri mātea, ko ranginui e tui honei, papatua nuku e takoto nei. Tuturu ki ōwhiti whakabaua ki a tīna, tīna, haumia hiu, kui e tāi ki e. So what we do is that we do three, uh, bless ourselves with some water three times before we go out, and it guarantees us some fish or something. <laughs> so here we go at the mercy of nature and the gods. So how much flounder will I be Thank able you. to catch for the king? I'm hoping for at least 20. Okay. You've got to think like a fish, eh? So the thinking is to catch the fish on the way in when they feed and when on the way out when, when they go. We've got two right there. Not so good at it. There we go. Here's our yellow belly flounder. Ooh. And that goes right in the bucket here. A beauty there. Oh, we've got another one. No, yeah, that's a good choice one, isn't it? It's going to be a feast. I'm going to have the freshest fish ever. That is a really good size. I think I might keep this one just for the two of us. <laughs> we've got another one here. Do you go out fishing every day? I go out there whenever I get an opportunity, I'm out here fishing. Oh, look, another beauty. I'm so excited. I've got all the fish I need. For the King's Feast, I'm going to cook all of these, actually. It's going to be a lot of work, just cutting them up, gutting them, filleting. Do you want to come and help? Yeah. Wow, I got helpers. I got helpers already. Enough. So much. Thank you very, very This much. freshly gathered food from the community will mean so much to the king. Next, it's time to fire up the stove and start cooking for the crown. This is it. Today, I'll be preparing a traditional dish for the Maori king of New Zealand. I've not met him yet, and I don't know if I'll get the honor. Only time will tell. The royal family is hosting a dinner party for the king's staff. The tables are set and the kitchen is heating up. I have been asked to make just one dish. The rest will be prepared by the king's own chef and I am really looking forward to seeing what is on his menu. So William, you've got two setups here, haven't you? You've got the main building over the other side, which is the formal hall. What do you call that again? That's the Farinui. Only the king eats there. Um, and any guests that he invites. Oh, so that's the biggest honour then to, to, oh, to be absolutely. allowed to there. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we're not even allowed to drink a water in there. <laughs> <laughs> I have already spotted these gorgeous purple Maori potatoes, some wild pork and a seafood platter of mussels, oysters and the New Zealand abalone power. Troy power oyster potore kina. Yep. Right. 
I'm gonna get out of William's way and concentrate on preparing my flounder with weno weno and camo camo. I will be putting my own twist on this most traditional Maori dish. I want to take these beautiful fresh New Zealand mussels and wrap my flounder around the mussel and then serve it with our vegetable and our wino wino leaves. So we have to start with our stock for the mussel. It's very simple. I just cut a little bit of onion and then I'm going to add leek, carrot, celery to it and we're ready to go. I know the king doesn't like garlic, so no garlic for today. So I'm just going to take these wonderful mussels. There we go. And we top that up with a dash of wine. And here's our beautiful flounder that I've, I actually pulled this out of the sea myself. I'm very proud of that. The secret to filleting a flounder is patience. Don't rush and don't worry. All right, then all I need to do is just roll this up nicely like this. I want to be able to stand it up afterwards, so I'm going to make the muscles stick out at the top. But before we can fry it, we have to flour it. Not too much. And there, that's just perfect. Look at the color. That's going to be a feast fit for a king. So I want actually quite big slices, so we get that lovely flavor into there. Whoa, I'm actually impressed with myself on this one. That's looking really good. And then we're going to add a little bit of our stock and cover it so that we're stewing it slowly. And for the very last part, our wino wino. I'll just toss that about a little bit until it's starting to wilt. And then a bit of cream. Mmm, that is really, really nice. Right, now I have followed everything that everyone has told me about Maori food. The idea is that the food should really stay very close to its original flavor. Everything that comes from the earth honors the earth, honors the sea and so on. Afterwards, when we're serving it to the king, it's going to be a much bigger platter and all the table will eat from one dish, as it is in traditional Maori feasts. Meanwhile, in the kitchen, William is preparing an unbelievable delicacy. That's the shark liver, I tell you. That's the porky. All it is, is just made with it's just shark liver and then just fried in butter. Mm. And it sets itself. Shark liver pate. Mmm, that's beautiful. Oh, superb. Whew. The king's gonna arrive in five minutes and we still have about an hour's worth of work. Let's hope the speeches are long. I can hear the king and his family arriving. There is still no guarantee that I will be allowed to meet him. Hopefully, he has heard good things about me over the past few days. He is welcomed with speeches and song, and my chances are looking a little bit brighter. I have been asked to join the official party, to greet the king, and even to formally introduce myself to his majesty and his wife. Now, I'm not sure if our meeting has put me at ease or made me more nervous about my dish. Then it's back to the kitchen to quickly finish my dish while the guests enjoy William's magnificent seafood platter. Do you think the king will like it? He'll love this. I hope so. Tell me he's not a kind man, he'll say it's rubbish! <laughs> it's quite enough of this Wino Wino. 
But I normally do the fine dining, a little bit here, a little bit there. Mm -mm. Not today. As I said, there's never too much butter. Let's see the moment of truth. Even my serving skills are put to the test. Of course, traditionally, this dish would have been boiled for quite some time, so the texture of my vegetables may come as a bit of a surprise. The king certainly appears to be enjoying my food, and his wife clearly approves of what I've served to him. You know, I love all of this. I love fish, mussels, winner winner, kamo kamo. Fantastic. <laughs> it's not health food, but it's yummy. It's yummy food. Thank you. I'm glad you liked it. Thanks. What do you think? I think it's magnificent. Absolutely. Thank you. Well, I see there's not much left. As, so. I, as you can That's see. That's a good it's size, good. isn't it? <laughs> Beautiful. 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 I've never tasted anything like it, especially with our kamo kamo. There's a long night of music and more exotic food ahead. But I am not so keen on the last dessert, fermented corn. It smells... Oh, oh my God! Oh. But I hear it tastes great. Absolutely. Okay, William, do you want to show us how to eat this? <laughs> no? <laughs> <laughs> William had never eaten it. It's really been one of my favorite experiences to see something completely different and the respect that the Maori people have for the land that they live on and the land that they live off has been truly an amazing, very gratifying experience. Join me again next week when I travel to visit more of the world's royal families in Cooking for the Crown.